In this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast, me and my guy Sam Ferris, we are going to discuss this wild and crazy opening weekend of the 2023 NCAA Tournament. And we're going to talk about the prospects that have helped themselves and some that have potentially hurt themselves with their play. Stay tuned. Big, big shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board podcast your first listen of the day. And this episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. If you're a first time user, you can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code Locked On. That is prizepicks.com, promo code Locked On. I'm your host, Rafael Barlow, the director of scouting for NBA Big Board and the founder of NBA Draft Junkies. And we got my guy back, Sam Ferris, who's been crazy busy, but he is the man behind NBA Draft Dummies, but he's far from a dummy. Sam, it's been a while, man. How's everything been going? It's been going good. Yeah, I've been busy. Um, actually, my wife and I moved over the last week or so, so all my stuff is still in boxes, but luckily I did know where my podcasting stuff was, and more importantly, I did have time to watch all of the games over the last four days. So a lot to hit on and a lot to talk about. Did you move to a new city or just move to a new house? Yeah. New city from Salt Lake to Las Vegas. Okay. So, all right. Yeah. What, what, what made you, uh, what made you take that, that move? Um, for my job. So I'm actually, I'm an accountant, which I've talked about before. And so I just transferred within the same company and I have family in Las Vegas as well, so it kind of made sense. And then I'm also much more of a warm weather person, so kind of all of the aspects uh, played into that. So, And if you're a basketball guy, there's so much stuff that goes yep. on in Vegas from the high school AU, I think like the Fab 48, to Summer League, to it's just so much going on in Las Vegas. So yep. it makes it a lot easier to do some live scouting. Yep. All right, let's talk about the NCAA tournament. Crazy weekend. How's your yeah. bracket looking so far? Uh, it, it's looking good. I'm still like in the 80th percentile or so, but I, I had TCU in the upset over Gonzaga. So that was one that I really wanted. Um, but I still got my championship game that I predicted was Alabama over UConn. So I still have, you know, a lot of people have lost, whether it's Purdue, Arizona, whoever have lost a lot of those teams. So I still have my championship game intact. So still got, those max points but i had marquette in the final four i lost them today and i had tcu as kind of one of my surprise elite eight teams and they couldn't quite get it done over gonzaga so overall it's like still positive haven't taken the big hits but uh it could have been better today there were a lot of people that were picking duke they thought duke yeah. had all the momentum i think they won like nine ten games in a row and so, um, at least in my bracket, a lot of people are, are are wiped out already. I did my bracket maybe like five minutes before the deadline. Yeah. The, <laughs> and I don't even remember who I picked. I've tried to look it up on my phone, but for whatever reasons, like the NCAA app keeps kicking me out. So mm -hmm. I don't even know. I, I guess <laughs> I guess uh, I have Alabama winning it. So I guess when I get that yeah. deposit for <laughs> for the winning, I know if I won or not. But <laughs> All right, so let's let's talk about prospects. Mm -hmm. First, let's talk about prospects that you believe have really helped themselves, and maybe if not even from a draft perspective, but maybe just have impressed you overall. Who's like the first name that comes to mind? So the first name that comes to mind, because it was more recent today, even in a loss, was Case and Wallace, who played really well today, 20-plus points, the usual – activity defensively and I think a guy we'll talk about in a later segment is Nick Smith and to me it's really easy to comp those guys because they're both highly touted freshman combo guards and both of them now are kind of playing through injuries when you know a lot of people would have told them to just shut it down right but Kaysen Wallace has played a lot better than Nick Smith and and today especially he had a really good shooting game the usual activity defensively. He's a guy that I like. I have him as a top seven prospect in this class. So a guy that coming in today, I was already higher on than the consensus. 
And he kind of showed why I'm still high on him as a prospect today. Yeah, I've had him in my lottery pretty much the whole season. But today was a game where I'm like, I got to move him up. He stayed around the 10 to 12 range. And, yeah. you know, there is a I guess, recency bias. But at the end of the day, man, he's rock solid. You got to give him the Kentucky bump. Yep. Doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Just does so many things well and should be able to come in and contribute right away. Doesn't have like the big, you know, like the the sexiest stats or, or the highlight real plays all the time. He's just rock solid. And it's a, uh, there's a chance. I mean, he could be, as of right now, I think I'm going to go ahead and say he will be the first guard from college basketball taken in the draft. Hmm. I, I yeah. think that, I mean, we may talk about the names later, but Keontae has struggled, Nick Smith has struggled, and Kaysen has been really, really good. So uh, when I when I go through a, my third round of film and watching everything all over again, when it's all said and done, he could end up being like my my first guard from college basketball that is selected. Yeah, he he very likely will be for me as well, and he's just he's just solid. And what I think separates him from those other guys is the ability to guard multiple positions defensively because of the length and the hands that he has. So that really separates him because I don't view him necessarily as the combo guard because of. You know, I view him as kind of that Drew Holiday type defensively. Now, is he going to be that good? Very likely not because Drew Holiday is one of the all-time elite um, defensive guards. But actually, if you look at his statistical profile, the, the closest statistical comp for what Cason Wallace is doing right now is UCLA Drew Holiday. So that's kind of really interesting. It matches on film, on the stats. And so I think that separates him from a lot of the other combo guards, because if you look back at the recent history of the draft, a lot of misses in the lottery are those combo guard types that aren't good enough on ball to be your main on ball guy in the NBA, but also aren't big enough to guard, you know, with versatility down the lineup. But I think he separates himself with the defensive versatility and like so many other Kentucky guards, it's really important to take into account, like you said, we see this over and over with Kentucky guards overperforming expectations in the NBA. So I absolutely do factor in that Kentucky bump as well. Yeah, you got to. I mean, they've got us too many times. I mean, Maxie yeah. was a guy that I overthought, even though I saw him in high school and I've been in a gym when he worked out. I just overthought it. Like the numbers weren't great. I thought his shot was too low as far as the release point. I didn't think he had like a natural position and he's outplayed his draft position by, by a wide margin. All right. Who was the second name that comes to mind as far as guys that, that stood out to you this weekend? So I'll go with another guy that I'm higher on than consensus. And he didn't put up big offensive numbers, but I think Derek Lively's defense, especially in the first game, opened up people's minds to like, this is one of the best defensive prospects in the class. And I think Lively is helped out by a guy like Walker Kessler in the NBA, who's come in overperformed expectations. And people realize now that in the NBA, you're seeing a lot of centers playing drop defense and just the ability to be seven, one and contest shots is extremely valuable in the NBA. And he, He's an elite shot blocker already, so he brings a skill that I can already bank on that I know is like borderline elite level, elite level in the size and the shot blocking. So to me, that's just a bankable skill, and I see that translating to, you know, potentially having that Walker Kessler, that Brook Lopez level drop defense. And to me, that's huge, and I think you saw that, especially in the first game, and, you know, Like in high school, we saw him shoot it a little bit. He hasn't really done that at Duke. He's more just played a role. But he's a guy that I've really come around on over the course of the college season, and I think he showed why in the first game of the tournament. Yeah, same here. I was very critical on Lively. I still have some concerns on the offensive end. He looks like he just doesn't have any – I don't know if it's not confidence. He's not even rolling to the rim. Like, he'll no. screen and just kind of stand there. And 
I was expecting a lot more from him on the offensive end. Definitely expecting more than five points per game. Yeah. What do you think about him on the offensive end as far as like what he'll bring to the table? Is he someone that that can be really good for a team in the regular season, but then in the playoffs could be someone that gets potentially played off the floor if he can't take advantage of teams when they go small? Yeah, I mean, that's certainly a valid concern, and that's why he's not going to end up going in the top 10. But, I mean, the NBA changes a lot. And right now, or over the last 10 years, we've seen teams go small a lot. But a lot of that was the product of dominant teams like the Warriors. And when a guy like Lively's in his prime seven, eight years from now, the NBA could be completely different. Maybe teams aren't necessarily going small quite as much. We don't really know what the trends are going to look like seven, eight years from now. So it's hard for me to factor that in too much. But certainly in the short term, that's a concern. I think coming into this year, I was hoping for more defensive versatility. And he did show it a little bit. But I think of him more just as a drop defender at this point, kind of protecting the rim. And then offensively, to me, that's more of the concern is he doesn't really even look at the rim unless he's dunking. He just... He just didn't do that at Duke. Like you said, he'd roll, he'd just kind of stand there, run some DHOs, but didn't look to score really at all. I hope that some of the shooting that he showed before college ends up hitting because to me, like a high-end, really good outcome for him is kind of like a Brook Lopez where he's hitting spot-up threes. Maybe he can take advantage of mismatches and finish inside and then just the defense inside um, just deterring and blocking shots. So that's kind of the upside pitch for him. But again, I think his floor to me is like fairly high that I can at least see him being like a good defensive center. Maybe not a starter. I think he can be, but at least I see him as like a good backup center defensively that can give you good minutes. All right. When we return, I want to find out who is next on your list. And then I want to pick your brain on some of the prospects on Duke and Arkansas about their long-term potential and how you thought they played this weekend. But let's talk about prize picks. And prize picks is daily fantasy made easy. All you have to do is pick two to six players, and if they would go score more or less than their prize picks projection, and you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. There's no competing against other people. It is just you versus the projections available. Prize picks offers projections on any sport that you watch, which includes NBA, NFL, Major League Baseball, College basketball for men's, women's, boxing, Euro league basketball, cricket, disco golf, NASCAR, tennis. I mean, the list goes on. And the entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It is that easy. It is safe, and you can withdraw your money quickly. And it is currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. So download the Prize Pick app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. If you are a first-time user, you can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code Locked On. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. So do not forget to enter the promo code Locked On. That sign up for instant deposit match up to $100. All right, second segment. This is Rafael Barlow with Sam Ferris, and we're talking about some guys that stood out in the NCAA tournament. The next guy I want to ask you about is someone that you were high on early. Mm -hmm. I want to give you your props for that. Ricky Council. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the fun questions I always like to ask myself is if you could give anybody in a certain draft class, like if you could guarantee them an above average jump shot, who would that help the most? To me, Ricky Council would be on that list this year. And like, if you look at the numbers, he's like shot it okay at times. But to me, his jumper is basically broken at this point. At just the way it comes off his hand, he kind of shoots it with two hands. But it's like a hitch. You think it's it a like... hitch. It yeah. does not. It doesn't look good. But I've been on Ricky Council for a while now. I had him as the top five prospect returning to college basketball this year. And the reason is because outside of the jump shot, he does everything so well. Like if he ends up if someone can restructure his jump shot and he shoots it okay, to me, he's a starting two guard in the NBA because very good defensively, really good athlete, can handle the ball, can actually pass better than you'd expect to. Like he just does everything else well. 
uh, in the game Arkansas played, uh, was it yesterday now? He had a beautiful drive and then a left-handed bounce pass in traffic to a roller on the dunk. And then the defense, the energy. Uh, he's got some of the best dunks this year in college basketball. So, like, yes. he's got everything else. <laughs> It's just the jump shot's going to need to be reworked. So if somebody's confident they can do that, or if it does end up happening, then he is a big diamond in the rough prospect. Yeah, I thought the most impressive thing that he did this weekend was showcase his ability to to make plays for others. I thought he made some really good passes, passes with his offhand, and Arkansas gave the ball to him down the stretch when they needed to win. They put the ball in his hands. He was their primary ball handler. He made big plays. The shooting is – it's a work in progress, man. It, but he shoots 79% from the foul line. Yeah. So do you think he should change his form or do you think that just continue to work on it? Because he he strikes me as a guy that could be one of two things, either a guy that was such a gifted athlete before that he never had to shoot yeah. jumpers – Cause I mean, with that athleticism and the size and the handle, like when he was in high school, he was probably just getting to the rack whenever he wanted to. Yeah. So, do you think that he should change the form, or do you think that he should just stick with the form that he has? Cause the touch isn't bad, and just get more reps. Cause like I say, he's probably not really had to shoot a lot of jumpers prior to to college. No, yeah, I agree. I think he's always been able to rely on his skill level and especially the athleticism. What I'll say is I never would advise for guys to try to change their their jumper in the pre-draft process. I just think that can create issues for you. However, when he gets to the NBA and he's with a team and they're working on his development process, I would say that he probably needs to. It's just like we've said, the hitch, he kind of shoots it with two hands. And while he shoots, I think, like you said, he has good touch because he shoots well from the free throw line and he'll hit tough like mid-range pull-ups where he just elevates and hits. But when you just see him shoot standstill catch and shoot shots, he'll just have some ugly misses that are way off. And he sometimes the hitch looks worse than other times. To me, it's a shot that does have to be redone, unfortunately. But again, I wouldn't do it during the pre-draft process. I would just like if I'm the team, then you know that's something you're going to have to work through. And if it doesn't work out, maybe he ends up just being a fringe rotation player because the shot's just too rough. But if you can figure it out, if you have one of those guys that's really one of the elite coaches at developing shooters, then that's how you find steals in the draft. You find guys that have everything else and just have one wart that you believe you can fix. Yeah, one of the things I liked about what he did this weekend was he went to the foul line 23 times. Jeez. He made what, 21 out of 23. Yeah. So I I think Arkansas is going to be dangerous, but not for the reasons we thought they were going to be at the beginning of the season. Now I want to flip it. I want to talk about yeah. his teammate, Nick Smith. You had a very interesting quote about Nick Smith Jr., and I had replied that I think Nick is the most divisive guy right now because at the beginning of the season, it was Brandon Miller. Like the range yep. for Brandon Miller was, I heard his highest number two early. And then I saw people talk about in the twenties. I talked to different people that had him in the twenties. They were concerned about his shooting. Everybody was pretty consistent about Nick Smith as a top seven pick. He was in yep. the, the running or being mentioned as the first player off from college off the board he might fall outside of the lottery yeah yeah the thing that i asked myself with nick smith is if i was a person that knew nothing about him coming into college mm -hmm. and i just watched all his film and looked at all his numbers at arkansas granted this it's a small sample size but still it's something you have to pay attention to so if i didn't know anything before college and i watched all his film now and his stats He's not even a guy that you would consider drafting. And frankly, he's like Arkansas's fourth best guard right now. And that was evident because Eric Musselman straight up benched him in the second half of that game when they needed, when their season was on the line, they needed to win. They needed to come back. He didn't even put him back in the game. And that was pretty telling. 
look, I get it. It's a small sample size. But the thing is that to me with Nick Smith, you're, you're looking at like a tough shot maker, like a shot maker, right? And to me, when you look at guys like that, it really comes down to the eye test, especially with such a limited sample. And on top of the numbers being really rough, to me, and this is something that every person has to do for themselves, is watch the film. To me, on top of the numbers being really poor, it just hasn't looked good. It's been really underwhelming for me. He doesn't get to the rim at all, and he just takes tough pull-ups, and he hasn't really made really any of them this year. And what's interesting to me is a lot of people came at me in the comments, and a lot of people did agree with what I said, but a lot of people talked about the context at Arkansas with there's no spacing, he can't get to the rim with the spacing in Arkansas. And that's fair, but at the same time, Anthony Black has looked better than him this year. Ricky Council is still getting to the rim and getting to the free throw line. Devontae Davis has been clearly better than Nick Smith. So it's like, yeah, I can take into account the context here in the situation, but when he's clearly like the fourth best guard on his team right now, that's kind of an issue. Yeah. All right. When we return, I want to dig a little deeper into Nick Smith and prospects from Arkansas and Duke. But let's talk about Nissan's most electric player. Most electric player of the week is brought to you by the all new, all electric 2023 Nissan Aria. And I'm going to put it on you, hot seat. Who has been your player of the week or the tournament? If you just had to pick one. Well, I just watched Drew Timmy dominate, so I'll give it to him for now. Drew Timmy, a guy that I've been watching since he was in eighth grade. Seems like he's been there forever. Man, I wish the NBA brought post post players back (laughs) because Drew is fun to watch. I mean, he's not playing above the rim. It's just all skill, footwork, touch. The seals, how he just gets, I mean, it's for me, it's just fun to watch. So, yep. Drew Timmy, this is his fourth straight Sweet 16. Yep. And if he wins a championship, I mean, that would be a, a great cap to a great career. Like I said, I've been watching him since he was in eighth grade. I knew he was going to be a really good college player, but I did not think he was going to be like a legend, like a legendary yeah. college basketball player. All right. The Nissan Aria, it is electric. It is brilliantly fierce, fiercely elegant, stunningly powerful, elegantly powerful, and it delivers on duality. It has a combination of fierceness and elegance. It is beautiful but strong. It is the perfect crossover SUV, and it is the 2023 Nissan Aria, and it packs pin you to your seat, pin you to your seat power and premium intelligence all in one electric vehicle. It is the all new, all electric 2023 Nissan Aria. It is the electric vehicle for people who love to drive. So shop now at NissanUSA.com. Now, if you want to eat healthy, then you have to try a Built Bar. And Built Bar March Madness bracket is here. We know you have a favorite bar or puff, and now it's your time to make it count. So go to BuiltMarchMadness.com and vote for your favorites. You know I'll be voting for, well, hopefully they still have it. My favorite was birthday cake. Did you have a favorite built bar? Uh, I like the cookies and cream one. Cookies and cream was good. So my vote would be for the birthday cake. And when you vote for your favorite bar or puff, you will be entered in a drawing where 50 lucky locked on listeners will get a free box of built. Not only that, but one locked on fan, you will get a 12 month subscription. You will have built bars or puffs delivered monthly straight to your door. You got to try it. Built Bar, it is the best protein bar ever because it's 100% chocolate made with no, it's a, made with 100% real chocolate. So if you're wondering what else makes them good, again, high protein, low in sugar, again, covered with 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. So run to BuiltMarchMadness.com right now to vote for your favorite bar or puff. Pick up a box while you're there. You can vote every day in March. So hop in and support your pick. All right, last segment, we were talking about Nick Smith when we left off. So I wrote an article on NBABigBoard.com. It's a shameless plug here. Check it out, NBABigBoard.com. So I wrote an article about guys that I thought were the best prospects in each region. And Nick Smith was a guy that I thought probably had a potential with a strong tournament run to creep into the top seven. Mm Mm-hmm. 
I thought he was for sure a lock, no matter how he played. Now, three days later, I'm really questioning that. <laughs> Luckily for him, Arkansas season is not over. I think that if Kansas would have won that game, it really would have been tough for him to just overcome a combined eight points in two games. I mean, I don't remember exactly what he what he shot. Was it over for I guess com- combined yeah. two for 14. He looks out of control. He doesn't look strong enough. I mean, there's so many things that kind of stood out in, in watching him over the last two games. But the thing that probably stood out to me the most was you really can't rely on freshmen if you're trying to win an NCAA tournament. Like some of the guys that are freshmen just do not look like they are physically able to handle the physicality and the bumping. I mean, he just looked like he was getting bumped off his spots. And I know he yeah. has like a huge, you know, fan base, a lot of people that are supporting him. And, and a lot of people are mentioning, like you said earlier, he doesn't have any spacing. He needs to play point guard, so on and so on. But number one, he never got to the rim. That was my knock on him coming into the yeah. season. He never got all the way to the rim. He heavily relied on his floater. Yeah. There are times where he looks like he can get to his spots, and then there are times where he looks like one bump and he's flying, taking just a wild shot. And he talked about his athleticism in your tweet. What do you think about him as an athlete? Because somebody was telling me they thought he was a really, really great athlete. And I guess he can be one of these guys that's he's a great athlete, but is not great athlete, but he's a good athlete whose game is not totally based off of athleticism. But what do you think about his athleticism from what you've seen? So the way I put this, I was telling a friend this, and this is a really kind of negative way to look at his athleticism is when you look at really good guards in the NBA, they usually fall into one of two categories. Number one, they're elite athletes like the Westbrooks, the Walls, the even like a Tyrese Maxey, De'Aaron Fox, or if they're not elite athletes, usually you'll hear people say they're super crafty. They play they play at their own pace. Like you can't speed them up. Those are like the Lucas or the James Hardens. Well, to me right now, Nick Smith is not a great athlete, but he's also constantly playing sped up all the time. So he like doesn't fall into either category. And to me, when I watch him, like you said, you said he plays out of control. The The term I've used is he just plays sped up all the time. And he's not making defenses react to him. He's reacting to defenses and he's not getting to his spots. You know, he's taking tons of floaters. And I see a lot of people talking about how great his touch is on those floaters. Well, my reaction is it's just, it's not great for his projection if he doesn't get to the rim and he's just taking tons of floaters, that's just not a sustainable diet of shots in the NBA. So that's kind of where I'm at on him is I just, I never thought he was an elite athlete, but I was expecting a lot better craft from him. So I've both been disappointed by the athleticism, but also just the craft of his game has been underwhelming to me so far. And in his defense, I think that his timing and rhythm is off. I think yeah. that there are games, there were games where he, I want to say he had like three games over 20 points where the shots were falling, not necessarily the jump shots, but he still, it's almost, I'm trying to think of the best way to work. Like when Duke has a guy that's injured, they kind of ease him into like a reduced role. Nick came in, in and out of the lineup from injuries, playing like he was the primary go-to scorer. And I just think it's really difficult to do if you've been out the lineup. I can't imagine he practiced a whole lot. Yeah. So his timing and rhythm is off. It's kind of like if I go, I haven't played basketball in a while. If I go to the gym right now, my moves, yeah. <laughs> they're not going to work. The timing going to be off. And that's yeah. how he looks right now, which on one hand, I think it looks good that he was trying to play and not trying to like shut it down. But on the mm-hmm. other hand, he hasn't looked good in in the process so um, it'll be interesting to see where he ends up all right before we before we close let's talk about duke and this was a question Mm -hmm. i proposed to my followers who is your top duke prospect long term (laughs) i know i saw your tweet and i was thinking about it in my own head and i couldn't come up with a great answer 
right now I'd go with Lively for the reasons I mentioned earlier. I do think, I think Proctor and Whitehead are close in terms of if you look at their potential kind of realistic ceiling as NBA players, like Whitehead is kind of that three and D wing with a little bit of juice off the bounce. And he makes sense in the NBA if it comes together. Uh, I'm with him. It's a similar question of how much he was hindered by injuries this year. How much do you attribute to that? I was lower on him coming in though than most. I know most people had him top five, top seven in this draft coming in. And then with Proctor, he's so young. I liked him a lot coming in, but again, he's still so young. So to me, when you look at the combination of his game off the dribble that he had, but also if you just take a step back and look at how much he improved from the start of the season to now and think about and factor in how young he is, to me, his ceiling is up there. I think, though, that he might come back for another year. So I'm going to cop out and say, to me, lively, because I, I like his floor the best. I think he'll probably come out. I think Whitehead will probably come out as well. I don't know, though. Like, it's really close, and I would include Filipowski, too. I just don't love Filipowski's translation to the modern NBA quite as much, though I think he's probably going to be, like, a safe role player. It's more of, like, a bench-type guy to me. And so I go with Lively, but I'm not su super confident in my answer right now. It's a good one. I'm still marinating on it. I'm kind of going with the safe answer at this point. I'm going with Proctor. All the way Proctor. He got off to like the worst start of the season. Yeah. Couldn't make a jumper. Yeah. I forgot the numbers. I could probably look it up. I want to say he probably missed like his first 15 shots. Yeah. And like you said, he's improved. The thing that I really like about him was he came in younger than his peers outside of Gigi Jackson. He's still supposed to be in high school. Got off to an absolutely brutal start. And a brutal start, like on national television, right? Or they're yeah. like talking about, oh, he's missed his first whatever shot. But he remained confident. And yeah. that's that's big to me. The size, the shot creation. I think he's a capable passer. But in the NCAA tournament, when Duke's season was on the line, he wanted the ball. Oh, yeah. And to me, that is that is very important. So I'm going with I'm going yeah. with Proctor long. He was a he's been a winner just um from this tournament just on that one clip that was going around where he had that uh that step back and made the guy fall over and hit that like fadeaway jumper that was a clip that was going around but yeah i i really like his game and uh do you think he comes back to duke next year you know i've talked about it before with this nil stuff it's it's crazy because you know it's like right now i would test the waters number one right now yeah. he's probably consider a second round pick maybe he could look really good in workouts and be a high riser but i imagine if he comes back to school next year he's going to be the top returner yeah. i'm not a big fan of the 2024 draft as of now so yeah. i think he could be a top five pick maybe it's like Jaden ivy you know in a yeah. sense like how ivy came back so we'll see and i mean he can probably get a big paycheck in nil money that kind of makes it a little bit easier but I would definitely test the waters. But I think if he tests the waters, I think that he's going to rise up and, and at least be a first-round pick. Yeah. Well, that wraps up this episode, man. It was good to have you back on. Love your insight. Thank you, the listeners, for making the Locked On NBA Big Board podcast your first listen of the day. Now, for your second listen, you got to check out Game to Game. Every moment, every performance, every result, Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NBA with local analysis the only locked on can deliver so follow game to game on the locked on nba channel it is available on the odyssey app youtube or wherever you get you wherever you get your podcast this is rafael barlow with my guy sam ferris signing out hopefully everybody has a great week enjoy their weekend and we are out